going to be talking about arterial pulse and I'm going to be taking this in an old school fashion with my notes, which I think are gold. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to be teaching this just with my notes and doing the best I can to explain to you because this is super important for all types of medical professionals. So I'll just jump right into it, starting with what is an arterial pulse? It's basically an impulse which is transmitted in the form of waves through the arterial wall from the SA node in the heart to the periphery. We essentially look for seven main things in a pulse while measuring the pulse rate. That is rate, rhythm, volume, character, whether all the peripheral pulses are felt, the radiofemoral delay and condition of the vessel wall. For the purpose of rate and rhythm, radial pulse is the best pulse. For volume and character, it's the carotid pulse. And for blood pressure, as we all know, it's the brachial pulse. So how do we calculate the rate? The rate should be calculated by palpating one entire minute on the radial artery. Normally, 60 to 100 is considered normal. Less than 60 is considered a sinus bradycardia and more than 100 is considered a sinus tachycardia. So some of the uh, main causes of sinus bradycardia can be physiologically in athletes and during sleep and pathological uh, examples could be severe hypoxia, hypothermia, myxedema, sick sinus syndrome, obstructive jaundice, increase in intraocular pressure, increase in intracranial pressure, any type of heart block or drugs like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Causes of sinus tachycardia could physiologically exist in infants, children, during emotion and excitation and pathologically it can be present during tachyarrhythmias like SVTs or VTs or increase output states like anemia, pyrexia, thyrotoxicosis, beriberi, pheochromocytoma, in an acute anterior wall MI, cardiac failure, hypovolemia, hypotension, or drugs like atropin, nephidopin, etc. Let's talk about pulse deficit. It's the difference between the heart rate and the pulse rate, and it should be counted simultaneously for one entire minute. Why is pulse deficit useful? It can help us differentiate between ventricular premature contractions and atrial fibrillation. Let's quickly talk about what a premature ventricular contraction or a ventricular premature contraction is. PVCs or are basically premature ventricular contractions which are early depolarizations that begin in the ventricle instead of the normal sinus node. So they can, if they occur every other beat, it's called a ventricular bigemini. Every third beat is called a trigemini. Every fourth beat is called a quadrigemini. And if there are three or more consecutive PVCs, it's called a ventricular tachycardia. So when we measure the pulse deficit, if it is less than 10 per minute, we should consider it to be a VPC. If it's more than 10 or even more than 20 at times, it could be an atrial fibrillation. A wave in the JVP will be present in case of VPCs, whereas it will be absent in atrial fibrillation. On exertion, VPCs can decrease or disappear, but atrial fibrillation will persist or increase. The rhythm, in, the rhythm differentiation between VPC and AF can be, there will be a short pause between normal beat and a PVC, followed by a long pause after the PVC, whereas in atrial fibrillation, the pauses are variable and chaotic. Let's talk about rhythm. Mainly two types, regularly irregular rhythm or irregularly irregular rhythm. Regularly irregular is normally found in atrial tachyarrhythmias with, with a fixed AV block or ventricular bigemini, trigemini or second degree heart block. Irregularly irregular rhythm is found in atrial and ventricular ectopics, atrial fibrillation and atrial tachyarrhythmias with varying AV blocks. This is too much in detail. Anyhow, when you get into ECG, Maybe right now or further in your path of medi medical career, you will probably come across this a lot more. So anyways, let's talk about volume. This is best assessed by palpating the carotid artery like we already discussed. But pulse pressure is basically the difference between systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. It, 30 to 60 millimeters of mercury is considered to be the normal pulse pressure. Less than 30 is considered to be a small volume pulse and more than 60 is considered to be a large volume pulse. Just remember that the pulse volume depends on the stroke volume and also the arterial compliance. So let's talk quickly about the arterial pulse waveform. 
This is what an arterial pulse waveform looks like. It has two parts, one systolic part and one diastolic part. The systolic part here is given in yellow and the diastolic part is given in orange. There is an anacrotic limb, which is the upstroke and there's a diacrotic limb, which is the downstroke given here. Diacrotos basically in Greek means beating twice. The systolic phase is basically corresponding to the opening of the aortic valve and it uh, corresponds to the left ventricular ejection. The diacrotic notch that you see here indicates the closure of the aortic valve and the rest of the wave, which is the diastolic phase, represents the runoff of the blood into the peripheral circulation after the aortic valve closes. We don't have to get into the detail of this to really understand too much about the arterial pulse, but it's good to know. The character of the pulse can be best assessed in the carotid arteries. So let's talk about some very common pulses that you can come across in your clinical practice. Starting with the hypokinetic pulse. Hypokinetic basically means a small weak pulse. That means it has a small volume and narrow pulse pressure. Uh, it can be seen in cardiac failure, shock, mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis. And back to the types of pulses, let's jump to anacrotic pulse, which is also called parvus et tardis. Parvus means low amplitude pulse and tardis means slow rising and late peak. So this is a low amplitude, slow rising and late peaking pulse. It is seen in severe valvular aortic stenosis. Hyperkinetic pulse is a large volume and a wide pulse pressure pulse. It is caused in high output states such as anemia, pyrexia, beriberi, mitral regurgitation, ventricular septal defect, etc. Collapsing pulse or water hammer or Corrigan's pulse is got a rapid upstroke and downstroke. Rapid upstroke when the systolic pressure is high and downstroke when the diastolic pressure is low. This can be seen in severe anemia, patent ductus arteriosus, atrial regurgitation, sorry, aortic regurgitation, AV fistula, rupture of sinus or valsalva. Thready pulse can be seen in shock. Jerky pulse can be seen in Hockham or which is called hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Pulses bisferians is a single pulse wave with two peaks in systole. It is best felt in the femoral and brachial artery. It is basically due to the ejection of a rapid jet of blood through the aortic valve. So let's come quickly to something called Bernoulli's principle. Hear me out. I know this is all like physiology jargon to you guys, but this is so easy. Bernoulli principle is basically whenever there is an increase in speed of a fluid, uh, there will simultaneously be a drop in pressure or a drop in the fluid potential energy. That means during the peak flow, Bernoulli's effect in the walls of the ascending iota, there will be a sudden decrease in lateral pressure on the inner aspect of the wall. That's why we can see two peaks. So the causes are aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, severe aortic regurgitation, Hockham and dissection of aorta. Pulses dicorticus is a single pulse wave with one peak in systole and one peak in diastole, as you can see in this picture. This is because of decreased stroke volume and decreased peripheral resistance. So you can think of the conditions in which there is decreased stroke volume like typhoid fever, dehydration, dilated cardiomyopathy, cardiac tamponade where there is decreased peripheral resistance. Pulses alternance or alternance is basically alternating small and large volume pulse in regular rhythm. It occurs in severe left ventricular failure or it can occur following a VPC. Pulses bigeminis is pulses alternance but with a compensatory pause. So in pulses alternance you don't see a pause, it just goes like up and down, up and down. But in pulses bigeminis there will be a pause, it is a sign of digitalis toxicity. Pulses paradoxes is commonly seen in cardiac tamponade that means if you ask the patient to inspire there will be like this decrease in the waveform as you can see the pulse volume will decrease during the inspiration this happens in cardiac tamponade constructive pericarditis airway obstruction svc obstruction so that's it for today's topic i hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and let me know if you'd like to see some more of my notes and if you like this old school lecture bye guys i'll see you guys in my next video Thank you.